Good morning, my name's Linda and I'm talking to you from my stitch shed. I like to sew, knit, crochet, embroider, anything to do with threads and wool. Well, I decided to do this podcast because I feel there's some people that I used to sew with or knit with that I can't reach any longer because they're perhaps not well enough to come out or they're just too far away. So it's a way of connecting people. So I thought I'd just today for my very first one is to cover the topics that I'm going to be bringing to you in the future. And I may be able to find time to do one every week and I may not, it might be once a month. We'll just see how it goes, see how many followers I get um, in the future. Right, first of all, I think the thing to say is, I when I teach, um, I teach sewing on a fairly basic electronic machine, and I choose the Genomes. So this one is a Genome, and it has a, quite a few stitches down here. It has the little screen across here. It has slow and fast speed, it has a needle threader, it also has needle up, needle down, and needle stop. It has a thread cutter on the side, and it, the model is a CXL301. I'm not sure if you can still get this model, but you can buy a similar model. And I always um, recommend people to start with a, a good basic model, not a cheap one, um, ranging from 250 to 350 pounds. Um, anybody can come to me and learn to sew, um, and I have three machines of this caliber that I teach with. So people don't have to bring their machines because that can be quite difficult, lugging them up and down, uh, in and out of your car. So what sort of things do I sew? Well, let me, let me get some and show you. I like to teach zips so i teach zip people how to make pouches um, with nice opening zips lined i like to also teach people how to use decorative stitches because these decorative stitches are long forgotten now we don't seem to use them i don't know why because it, it creates quite an interest especially on the back of a pouch um, and it also gets you used to eyeing up straight lines even though if you've drawn them on or or um, if you're doing it, if you're doing it with a guide so there's one of the pouches I like to teach simple patchwork which is nine patch now you have to excuse this this is all made of scraps out of my scrap bin and it's actually a cover for the dog bed as you can see it says poppy in the middle and it's got a little doggy She's a Yorkshire Terrier, um, so I'm so sorry if you hear her bark. She hasn't got a very loud bark, but she may bark if the postman comes or something. Now this is done in a nine patch, so three by three, and I teach people how to chain piece and then put that together into a nine patch and then just keep adding on. And as you can see, I've used decorative stitches to quilt it. it it has just a, it's a pillow slip design and it is just quilted through the wadding straight on. So if I open it up and show you, you will see the stitches straight on the wadding. And for the backing, I've still pieced the backing because I had an odd piece and as it's for a dog bed, um, which will be used in the stitch shed because she has to come and sit in the stitch shed with me, um, I just used pieces of fabric that I had left. I bound one end here and I used the pillow slip method here to tuck the pillow in. So that's the easy things I teach. And then as people progress, they want they start coming to me and they ask me, can I teach them to sew a dress or sew a skirt or um, basic pattern cutting out? Um, so I, I develop them, or try to develop them, onto more sewing skills. Um, 
they normally last uh, come to me for two two to three years and then after that people are, are sailing they they've got the confidence to start sewing for themselves and then I get odd texts or telephone calls which I love I love keeping in contact with people I love the fact that they're progressing it's so exciting to see somebody who couldn't even hold a needle didn't even know how to work a sewing machine and they're flying absolutely flying and it's it's absolutely great so to all of you out there that I have taught and I hope you are watching at some stage <laughs> Um, you've heard all of this before I know um, but hopefully I'll bring some more tips um, and some interest to you to fire up that sewing mojo that sometimes we all lose at, at some stage and even me I even I do I I don't always know what I'm gonna sew um, and especially if there's things going on in your life that you don't have time but five minutes a day just to do something small it fires your interest or even to watch something like this it can fire your interest so that leads me on to patchwork and quilting because I do teach quite a lot of that and I have been doing this for a very long time since 2005 um, I attained my patchwork and quilting diploma uh, I attained my teaching certificate um, so that I could I could teach and that has led me on to teaching other things that I had done prior to getting my my diploma in patch and quilting um, but we'll do that we'll talk about that another day so to show you something a little something of of my patchwork and quilting this is quite a large block it measures 12 and a half by 12 and a half this is just one block and it's a basket that is appliqued on and it's appliqued on using a blanket stitch on the edge and that's a machine blanket stitch the handle is then appliqued by hand and that's a cross bias binding handle and then because I I didn't really know what to do in the center I decided oh I like doing a bit of embroidery so I attached some butter muslin to the back of this area and I drew different designs in each basket handle so this one is obviously bees um, other ones I've done butterflies or flowers so these ones are the, are the tulips and then once once all of the blocks are together and I've joined them with cornerstones and different different fabrics that match and then I did a border of Piano, what we call piano keys. I layered it up, three layers, the backing, the wadding, and then the top. And then I machine quilted it. Now I did a wavy design called vermicelli in the blocks. And I'll show you on this piece. In the borders, I did a leaf and a circle all the way around the borders and through the center borders as well i don't know if you can see probably can't see let's find a piece where you can see there you go oh the dustbin men are here i'm sorry if you can hear them and this quilt turns out to be about a single size quilt it will lay on top of a, a single bed quite comfortably it may not drape too far over the sides but I often make them like that because especially if you just want a topper um, it just keeps that little bit of weight on your bed but it also keeps you a bit warmer in in the real winter or you can just lay lay underneath it in the summer because often we take our, our main quilt off even our summer quilt if it gets too hot but I like weight so I put a sheet on first and then I lay my quilts on top and then it's not so heavy. I always use a cotton wadding um, so that should make you a little bit warmer but it, it's lighter. Um, I like the look it gives you especially once it's washed and it crinkles it gives you that antique look and I do like the antique look. Um, 
And, I, and yes, the answers, you may be asking yourself, how do I quilt all this? Well, I have a frame. Now, that's going to be a topic for another day. I'll take you actually through the stitch shed. And uh, this is actually my teaching room of the stitch shed, um, which is attached to the house. Um, it can it can take four comfortably. I don't take any more than four people though, because it can be a bit squashed when you have all your bags and everything. Um, and then in my stitch shed, it's my area. I like to do my sewing, my experimenting in there, and then I can bring whatever I want to teach into here. I do go out and teach as well. I go to, um, I've got a group I go to that I've been going to for many, many years. Uh, I do one-to-ones and I don't mind teaching if, if any shops um, contact me. But enough of that. So then you say to yourself, oh my goodness, what about the, the knitting or the crochet or the embroidery? Well, my husband will tell you that I don't ever sit still. Or I don't ever sit in the chair and just watch the TV or uh, I do read. I do like to read and I find that very relaxing. Um, we, we caravan as well in the summer. So uh, I like to take patchwork with me there. I like to take my knitting. I like to take my embroidery. So it does sort of come with me. And I'm always, not always very popular when I take up some cupboard space. So my la I'll show you my, my last make. Let's move this out of the way. Oh, sorry, move the camera. Not getting, not very good at this yet. Now, my daughter works in an old farmhouse and it's very, very cold. It's an office-based uh, position that she has. And uh, she was saying how cold she is um, especially once the office has been closed up after the weekend and they go in and even though the heating's on they still have to whack it up and they can if it's very cold weather they can feel very chilly now i w I, I purchased some wool through a friend who had bought some from actually from aldi and it had got some wool content in it and, and she she couldn't wear it because she's allergic to it so i purchased it straight from from my friend um and I thought, what am I going to do with it? It's chunky. And I don't really knit with chunky. I have done loads in the past, but I've sort of gone more onto lighter weight, four ply, and doing smaller things. And then I thought, oh, perhaps Emma would like, my daughter would like um, a nice cardigan that she can wrap herself up in. So it basically, it hasn't got a rib. It's got a turned hem light nearer so you can see so the hem is turned up and sewn as you would a hem if I take it away you can see it better there then it has pockets at the front and then as you see the front is ribbed with cable and then it has a large collar so if I try and hold this up now she didn't want the button at the top she wants to try it as just a wrap cardigan so it comes across like that it has rib on ribbed cables on the cuff if I stand up and then the pockets so there we are so that has been an absolute joy to knit and I've still got 400 grams left so who knows one of the grandchildren may get a nice little cardigan. Now, what are the other things that I make? Well, the other things, like I said, is I do like to teach people how to put zips in. I do like to teach people how to do buttonholes, buttons, because um, people are very scared of doing buttonholes, very scared of doing zips, but actually they're so simple if you have the right tools. So if you have your the right zipper foot, it's like doing patchwork and quilting. If you have the quarter inch foot, then it, you're going to do a, a good good seam on that and that's what we want right so to mix my embroidery I make embroidery panels and then I put them into project bags so this is I don't know if you can see it's freehand embroidery so there's no actual we're not following a line or anything that their stitches created, um, made to create flowers, trees, roses, you can see their daisies, agapanthus, primulas. 
and then I stitch that into a frame which I've done here. I've obviously put a handle on it, done a nice, oh and I like to utilise old zips. Um, so this particular one came out of a very old dress and it had a lovely end on it. I liked the end. So, and it's an old metal zip, but it sits perfectly in there. Um, the back is exactly the same. So I try and match the fabric up with the embroidery. So that's that one. Then two years ago, we went, uh, we had a very hot summer. And when we were away in the caravan, I found it very difficult to knit. Um, your hands get hot. It's, it's really not comfortable when, you, when you're hot. So I'd started this particular embroidery many years ago before my mum passed away. And she taught me, she was the one who actually taught me how to do this Brie embroidery. Um, so it's bullion knots, um, it's French knots, it's all sorts of things. And I thought, well, what am I going to do with this? It was quite a loose weave. So I made a cottage door with a wisteria and a rose tree. And, a, and it's got hydrangeas, got the window there, the path, the mat, um, some hollyhocks coming up the side here. Um, I think this one is fuchsia there. Now... The story behind all of this, I try and relate my embroideries back to things I know, back to things I can remember. My dad was a keen gardener, very, very keen gardener, and in one house they had a wisteria growing up the side of their garage and it was absolutely beautiful. He grew fuchsias and he, he would take cuttings, he would have a hole greenhouse full of fuchsias, enter them into shows, all sorts of things. He loved roses um, and at one stage he gave me, I can remember he gave me 20 rose, rose bushes for a house that we moved into many, many years ago when I first got married. Um, hydrangeas he liked, all sorts of things. And then with this particular project, as you can see it's bigger and I, again I did, I did the handle I used some fabric, because these were memories of my dad's flowers. This fabric was actually my mum's. That, so she was a keen crafter and she had quite a nice um, selection of fabrics that she couldn't use as she became ill. So I have used that and I have quilted this, you can see in straight lines. And you can see the straight lines across the back. So you may have seen this on my Instagram, but I just thought this would give you a flavour of what I like to do. Now, the other thing I like to do is I like to utilise things. So, out come the jeans. Now look how pretty you can make this. A pair of jeans. So, there's the back. Nothing wrong with those jeans. Didn't like them. Worn out in the hems or perhaps perhaps you just grew out of them <laughs> even <laughs> um, typical that would be uh, so out comes another idea now this this fabric here I made my daughter when she was about three a dress beautiful dress she wore it once we went to Heacham where my parents had a caravan and she fell over in the sand on the sandy road. It wasn't it wasn't the sand on the beach, it was sand, sandy road. And I couldn't get ever get the stain out. So I kept the dress and cut out the bits because she'd only worn it once and I kept it all these years. So this is that dress. So that's Emma's dress. And the crocheted lace, I bought that. That was probably from the works. They do cards of lace for about two pounds. Um, and I added that in because this, my, my grandmother used to crochet and she would crochet lace. So that's just a reminder of her. So that's a bit of everybody really. Now, last year I knew I wanted to do some, depict Cambridge, which is where I live in a way that actually it wasn't King's College or it, it 
wasn't the famous some of the famous buildings you know I just thought what can I do to capture Cambridge so my idea was to use a Liberty fabric and to use a linen type plain fabric with it and I wanted to make some book covers so I have depicted the Cambridge blue bicycle now we're fully full of bicycles in Cambridge as anybody who's visited Oxford or Cambridge will know because of the because of the students uh, it's easy to get around um, so I chose the Cambridge blues this is my own design I've drawn it myself I've not copied it it's all come from me and then I chose some nice flowers I've chosen some lavender and daisies and I can't remember what else I did there. Oh, daffodils, because we see a lot of daffodils along the backs. So I chose those. So this is my notepad. So that's a notepad. Then I thought, oh, I draw. I'm not very good at it, but I do draw. I need a book cover for my artist. Plain paper. Now, again, we go back to the wisteria. The wisteria is such a beautiful shrub tree i don't know what you'd call it call it it always grows up seems to grow up walls so i would say it's more of a shrub a climbing shrub um and at Magdalen college in cambridge we have a beautiful display spring early summer of of wisteria and there is a wisteria walk that you can do around cambridge um i have never been um but i've heard that people do the wisteria walk so I started with my bike again, same design of my bike, and then it just grew from there. So my bike is by the river, we have the wisteria, we have Magdalen College in the background, the pavements in Cambridge, and some of the flowers. Again, the daffodils and the daisies, and this is... And it took a lot of work, I must say, to do all of this. These are all French knots. So these take quite a long time to do. And I was, I was very, very lucky. My mum was a very keen embroiderer and had many supplies which she, did, which she gave to me. So I have steadily been using those up. Now, I don't teach embroidery in, in this, at this level. I teach beginners in embroidery, so I start off people teaching them hoop work. And I've hung, excuse me, excuse my back, I've hung these up. So we start off with some straight stitches. That's all they are, two, two strands of embroidery floss, straight stitches. And then we go on to what more we can do with them to make them a bit more interesting. And then this is the third one where we do, excuse me again, I should have got these down. And this is Rose. And that is because my mother-in-law was called Rose. In fact, her name was Rose Rose. Her surname was Rose as well. Um, so this is what you can do just with your bullions and a straight stitch. Isn't that pretty? We're nearly at the end. I hope you're not bored. So, I also go to a group, an embroidery group. It's a private group, but uh, we were set, uh, we set, we are set some challenges. And over Christmas, I was set a challenge to make a needle case. Um, Give, we were given some fabric, it was dyed, and we were told to use stitches that we know. Well, this particular piece of fabric was so beautiful, I did not want to use it as a needle case, so I decided to make a scissor case, because I have quite a few pairs of scissors that are mine, but also my mum's, and I want to protect them. Um, now, so I created a scissor case holder, so you can see... I don't know if I'll put the light on a bit more. Oh, that's not very good really. It's a yellow light, so that's not very good. So that is the front. 
this is the back the the tassel is from the scissors and then I just did some wildflowers on the back but you can see the gradient of color because it was it was a hand dyed piece of fabric it's so so pretty and then it's put together with glove stitch down the side to hold it all together so that's that but I still had to do the needle case because that was our challenge so here I did my needle case so I decided to do daisies I found some pink fabric I mean I don't know where I got it from I've sort of had to search a little bit but there you go there's my needle case so I put some pink felt in there to hold my needles and I've dated it and put my name on the back so there you go that's probably backwards to you so that's it that's that's me there's some other things I'd like to bring you in the future. I'd like to talk about sewing machines and the different type of machines and what you can do with them. I'd like to talk more about knitting as a topic and crochet as a topic. I'd also like to bring you my monthly makes just to keep your sewing mojo going. We need to get this world sewing. We need to bring back some of our crafts to the four we'd forgotten about those in the in the 80s and 90s and early 2010s we need to bring them back we're 2020 now we need we need these skills we need to give those children fine motor skills so they can hold a needle so they can thread a needle even so they can use the eye to hand contact we need all of that but we also need to keep our local shops going so that's going to be one of my main thing is in and around Cambridge I hope to bring you news on different shops that we have around that will that will give you supplies anyway that's all from me today um, thank you for watching I hope I've been clear and I hope I've not been up and down too much bye for now see you soon